We start off as a normal customary clean Control. grass mill. What do you call the company we're going to? Armstrong Machinery. Armstrong. So we're heading up to Armstrong Machinery and uh, we're down. Up or down? Down. Come on, my lady, you're right. You're right, my road. We're going down, so we're going down to Dublin. You see, you go up to Dublin? No, I'd say down. No, you go up. No, I'd say up to Balmain. No. Uh, no. You always go up to the higher hierarchy. I'm nearly sure if you go back to geography and you look at geography, you always go up to the, the bigger capital, you always go up to the... If it's down the country. It's not down, it's it's down. the That's because you hold the map like this here. Yeah, but it's on the south. Sure, equally it could be round. Because is the world not round? We could be going around to Dublin. This is like the whole EU thing, you know? So we've got the 11090 down at uh, Armstrong Machinery in County Dublin. Uh, before we start to put the turbo on, we're just going to dyno and see what horsepower's in her. Kirsty's along with us today. She wants to see what's all involved in putting a turbo on a 110. Savage. 1998 boys, look. There is the See, proof. we're looking at the deck here, see, look. Here's your, here's your max power here, so 97 at 1125 at 1000. And the shaft you do 92.6 torque figure, 626 foot pounds of torque, 38.3% torque backup. That wee tractor is that all there. That wouldn't have done any different from you now. No. She's all there. Asked you plenty of questions now, Kirsty. Well, well, you're going to get interrogated. She clean enough for you. Who wants to help you with the bonnet? Kirsty, do you? Aye. Okay, if you go to the far side and jump up on the axle. Okay, I'll just leave it sit for a second. You watch that paintwork now? No, that's what I'm watching out for. Oh, I'm not tall enough, am I? No, you're, you're um, perfect. Yeah. Reach up. Oh, We're going to change the manifold. We'll get out the parts and we'll have a look at them. Just as well you're not here every day, Kirsty. Why? A bit of a distraction about this. <laughs> I never saw the boys as quiet. Hey, that's a good ad. That's a good job in the pipe. Oh, yeah. That's a proper that's a nice job. job, isn't it? It's a neat yeah. job. Yeah. Please with that. All these modern engines, I mean, you're, you're, you're straight into where you need to be there in a, in, in a couple of minutes. You know, really. Two I that's it, yes. Yeah. You We're take there your, your T175, whether you like it or love it. The preparation work to get going there would be unreal. We're in the realms over here, like. We're literally half an hour or so into the job and we're at the boils of this tractor. She seemed to split apart pretty easy there. On the table here, we have all her parts just ready made it to look go. Easy, guy, that's all. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you're the man's so edit. We, we it's only a really difficult job, you know what I mean? We, we just made it look easy. We only stood and watched. <laughs> Where, what, what is the crack? Ah, give me, job, give me a rundown. Well, we've, done, we've just taken off the exhaust manifold, which worked out well because a lot of the time, 1998 tractor, the bowl could snap. So we've all that off. We've got our air pipe off, any pipes and wires we needed to get off or off, so we're going to start put, building up the, the exhaust manifold from a, a 13090. So the 13090 was the bigger chassis, you know, the, the big one, which was the, the smallest turbocharged one at the time. Is that what always would have went on the one off a 130? No, or? a lot of the time there'd be, there'd be spurious manufacturers would have a turbo kit, complete kit, made up, ready to go for a 11090, and you, you buy a kit and you put it on. But, I mean, we're New Holland dealers. Why not stick to original? Okay, yeah. yep. That's the turbo, the original turbo is a... It's a very good brand, a Garrett Turbo, mm -hmm. um, and that's what Fiat would have used. So it's all, it's all original stuff, it's all genuine Fiat stuff. Which is, it's nice to keep it like that, isn't it? It is, I think yeah. so, on this job. So what is the stages here then? So we're going to put the, manifold, the exhaust manifold on first because it's going to carry everything, isn't it? And with that on then, we put the turbo on and then we need to get a, an oil feed and then return the oil away from it somewhere off the block here. So we get a return oil in here then. That's the procedure. 
Put popcorn, popcorn right? We've been sorted. Yeah. A bit of popcorn in your dip and dab. Dip and dab. <laughs> Ooh, kick off up up. Manifold first, because it's going to carry the turbo. You can build the turbo on it then and get the oil feed to it, which is the most important. It won't last two seconds without oil. What's the best way to look after a turbo? Just if you're, if you're work, working hard, pulling yeah, harder. Keep you away from it, Kirsty. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh. I love that part. I was in there just trying not to laugh there. What are you doing now? Now I'm just putting on the second half of the manifold. It's coupled together with this sleeve here. There's no seals on that. I mean, no seal is going to stick the heat in there. Yeah. It just kind of, you saw me tapping it in with the plastic hammer, this bit yeah. slides into that bit. It'll kind of form its own bit of carbon, a bit of, bit of black soot will go up there and it'll kind of form its own seal. It'll not expand or anything, no? It will, aye, but... It, the whole lot will expand kind of together, you know, that's, we'll that's the theory. The reason why they don't do a one-piece manifold is because of that, Christy. Yeah. I mean, you, that, that, that cylinder head is going to do that when it gets yeah. hot, and that's to allow it to do that. It'll never be 100% sealed, but it, it'll be close enough. This is a bit of a, a privilege to be asked to do this, to be honest with you. This is the main part, yeah. folks. Yes. Is the turbo, it is a Garrett turbo. Can I hold it? Yeah, go on, hold it. It's nice, isn't it? It's an object of beauty. How did we ever survive without these? This is what gives every young fella and some young girls. Go on. Word I don't this really know about it. <laughs> 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 I'm, not really, I'm not really sure how I can finish no, this one off. There's no safe way of finishing that sentence. But you all know what I mean. Oh, I know what you mean. This is what it's all about. That's what it's about. Awesome. I shall hand that back to you, my friend. What's happened here, um, what they're doing at the minute is, if the turbocharger applied, now they're trying to just get the oil feed sorted, because obviously oil up into the turbo and oil back down. So Charles has just, he's went to one of his more experienced mechanics who used to actually, who served his time on fates just for a second opinion, because they're going to have to fabricate one of the pipes, because one of the pipes wasn't in the turbo kit, so that's pretty much it. So they're just, second opinion. Not because Charles is such a good mechanic, he knows that good mechanics need second opinions from time to time. Isn't that right, Charles? Yeah, I'll open that there. That's what I'll tell you there. Just say the yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, turbo's on. Pressure pipe at the top, return the at pressure. the bottom. You had to manufacture this pipe. We had to do a little bit of a... Uh, she's ag, ag spec now. She's ag spec. So, what's left to do the oil? Now, we need a gasket for here, so... Now, you were a wee bit puzzled about the oil, how you were going to get the whole oil. You got a second opinion. Did I? Um, I cut a wee while ago. What's... From Brennan. Um, Brennan reckons to go in here. I was investigating another one that I found turbo the other day. Well. Totally different. Is it? Looks totally different and everything. The turbo not, does it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a Garrett turbo as well. It's an after market um, one. Aye, right. Um, the turbo's actually further up, straight up. You can see where it's had to be manufactured, but yeah, a far neater job. That's a nice job, isn't it? That is a nice job. What's the crack with this paper? It's gasket paper. Right. It's not just the back of your cornflakes box from breakfast. It's, <laughs> it's more expensive than that. That's all the original gasket is made from, sure, isn't it? Yeah. It's like more cold, isn't it? You're starting to show off now. Yeah, just like this bit. That's how you make a gasket with a 22 mil spanner to start and a 13 mil spanner to finish, only in Ireland. So basically what we're doing now is he's welding up the fitting for the return. You can't order it anymore as a part. This guy charge obviously is not just a fitter. He can manufacture, he can weld and he can make things happen. That's our fitting welded, put in the cooling department. Not everybody has a cooling department like that. No, that's very good. And then we just grind the top of it. The proof of the pudding. Will it screw? Will it screw? That's our 90 degree. Yeah, no, it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's grand. Will we fit, fit that, that then, yeah? Yep, fit that so we need to get this thing going. Pachu! Is there any maintenance in a turbo? Not really, I suppose. For somebody I mean, that doesn't know. I mean, you look after it all right with the. 
just by giving, Normal her, service giving her a chance to wind down. And yeah, I suppose it's very important then to use a high quality engine oil then and change it regularly because everything is going to be running that wee bit hotter and under a wee bit more pressure. And then there's another large component that needs to be lubricated, you know. So, so the basics is give her a little bit of a chance to warm up. Give her a chance to warm up and give her a little bit of a chance to cool down. Yeah. And uh, sample good high quality grade oil. Good oil. Does New Holland have like uh, an oil they recommend or do you source yeah, your own? Yeah, they have their own uh, branded oil. It's uh, Petronas. It's their company, which you see them on the Formula One race cars. And it's marketed as Ambra. A-M-B-R-A. A-M-B-R-A. Yeah. So you're trying to return the oil in basically through the lowest point possible? Or? Yeah, get her down and with a free flow return. Now. You, don't, you don't want any restriction on the return. Because if you do, then you'll pop the seals in your turbo then, you know? Right. And she'd probably start putting the oil into the, run it back in through in, into the manifold. And that long pipe that we got made, Kirsty, please, which is our return pipe. We're feeding it on a, on a, on a quarter inch pipe and we're returning on a 3 8 pipe, so the return is bigger than the, than the feed, yeah? What I would do now is I'd fire it up and make sure that our oil goes up, back around, and we should see oil coming out of this, and then we know that we've been lubricated before we connect it up. Because other than that, we're in the, in the land of doubt. That's all right. It's all right, Kirsty. Yeah, do the honours, please. Turbo has oil. Well done, Kirsty. No problem. Well done, Kirsty. See that great wee tractor starts first time on the button. So it's just a matter of connecting all up now. I'm going to connect this up here now. So I am. We don't want that oil and that exhaust. So you've took that out round to try and keep it away from the heat? Just, yeah, just because it's a rubber pipe. If it was a metal pipe, I could run it down through the manifold, but that's fine with that. Keep it away from the heat. So it's a new Holland pipe? It is a new Holland pipe. Mm. And that's done. Ah! Super. Is that the angle you want? Uh, I'd be better with the side, wouldn't it? Yeah. Give it a job of a trot there. I know you want it. Huh? Give it a job of a trot. I know you want it. Ah, what do you see? She's going to go for spinning it now. That's us. Ready to go. Are you excited? Yes. <laughs> huh? Oh my word, Kirsty. I want to take her up and down that motorway. <laughs> well, Kirsty, what about them for gentlemen? They are. They definitely are. A whole lot of them. That is unreal. I'm, I'm actually a little bit taken back by the, the hospitality and, and how they looked after us. To 
be honest, I thought it was incredible. Um, are you glad to be a part of it? Oh, I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. You know, what I find get through life is there are some people out there still who are very charitable and uh, not too many of them now but not so many now but people like that there and you know <laughs> I'm a John Deere man through and through if I was in business for combines or I was in business for tractors you and I, I mean if the product was close I, I couldn't look past them yeah to you know and that I think that's something us at Grassmen have always been trying to say and and, and explain to people that you know what a lot is to do with the dealership network, yeah. a lot is to do with what's going on out there and they are just a fine example of good decent people and you can tell from their business and you can tell from some of the people that we met through them there like um, Michael Hoy from Country Crest, like, you can tell they have a great work and relationship and that's what it's all about mm -hmm. and that pleases me no end to be a part of that. Team Grassman.